Hi, today we're talking about the Dash B domain. In particular, the FCC regulation that was introduced to us last year, June 2nd, 2016. By now I'm sure many of you are already familiar with it. It's probably bitten you in one way or another, either affected your personal network or something that you've had a question on, and hopefully we can clear the air a little bit today. Like I mentioned, FCC regulation, this is the actual one. You can look up FCC 14-30A1, where it will actually spell out everything that, uh, th that's contained within the regulation and, and kind of the restrictions or decisions that were made based on, on those regulations and what the FCC wanted to do to change things. But Cisco was then forced, based on this regulation, to shift from A to B, as we know. Right, so what is the deal with B? What, is it, what does it mean? What does it mean uh, to our networks, to us, to the performance? Well, we're gonna cover some of that today. I have these laid out. There's four major ways in which B changes the game. Um, the first being the Uni1 band is adding four channels. Okay, simple enough, but opening up some expandability. Uni1 band is also increasing uh, its power output by one watt, and that's uh, indoor, outdoor, uh, and point-to-point -point communications. In addition, terminal Doppler bands, they're adding three channels. So, so far, all of these things have been, you know, additions or increases, but in the Uni3 band, there's a whole bunch of extra requirements, and I encourage you to look up and see what all of those are. Um, in many cases, as, as things were added or changed or power was increased, there are also restrictions or requirements that are sort of tacked on, depending on how you may be using uh, the hardware or whether or not you're using it outside. And again, a lot of what was changed from the A domain to the B domain as far as the U.S. is concerned, and I do want to point out that this B domain is a U.S. only thing, all of those changes really affect the 5 gigahertz radio. So what does this mean for us? Well, simply, there's a couple of things that we need to be aware of, right? So if we're going to make the transition from A to B or start purchasing A or, or B access points, uh, what, what kind of effect is that going to have on us? Well, one of the major things we need to be aware of is the new controller iOS requirements for the B domain. Now, what Cisco did is they didn't just give us one version of software. They didn't just say, hey, 8.3x is going to be the new requirement. They gave us to us in several flavors. And I have them cited here, um, at least as a starting point, 8.0.132, 8.2.110, and 8.3.102. Those were the starting um, software revisions that we would be looking at. Today, um, there are higher versions of these trains already available that you can move to, where they've either um, tweaked things or added on some stuff. But I wanted to give you the starting points as a minimum that you needed to have uh, to be able to utilize the B domain APs. Um, loss of compatibility is another major thing to keep an eye on. And, and what I mean by that is, um, as you up your software levels in your controller, you may have other APs, uh, A domain APs that are in your network that will no longer work with that software revision. Uh, maybe that software is too high for the AP. Um, while the, most of the N access points are good to go, I would say things that are less than that, maybe like the 1231s, for example, 1242s, be careful when you start moving up your software so that you don't knock those APs off of compatibility. Um, B and A APs can coexist, which is good. That's good news, right? So if you do currently have an A access point network, you can continue to use it, um, which falls kind of into this last point. There's no forced upgrade. These go hand in hand. You can still use A domain. Uh, there's no restriction for doing that. You just can't buy a domain, a domain APs brand new. So um, having these guys coexist is fine as you start acquiring the B domain access points, you can mix those in if you wish, um, or you can just start swapping those out as required. Now hopefully this answers your questions and gives you an idea of some of the things, maybe the pitfalls that we have to watch out for. Um, as always, feel free to give us a call if you need any other information.